How many of you have heard of Burning Man? How many have been to Burning Man? How many know why the man burns? Let's try to find out. Let's ask Google. So you type in why does the man burn? This is actually Google. So can oh, you can only see it on this screen, sadly. Hope it's uh, visible at least to, to some people. I'll try to talk you through it. And uh, uh, Google gives you an answer, which is from one of the search results. And basically it says the sculpture is burned to cap off the event. So it doesn't really answer the question. And then you can click through the few links and you'll find that they don't really give you a full answer. They kind of talk about it, but. So let's go and see what ChatGPT has to offer. The same question. Uh, and it tells you a bit about the festival and then it actually gives you a pretty good answer. So if you've been to Burning Man, maybe you'll agree with this. This is the points it's making. It's, um, what we'll talk about today, though, is uh, enterprise search. And um, actually, first, well, let's recap what we just saw. So ChatGPT gave us a uh, concise answer, and we were able to search based on meaning, while Google normally is keyword-based, and it provides links. In this case, it's also given you what's called an extractive search answer, where it just extracts a passage from one of the search results links. So ChatGPT is clearly more uh, enjoyable. But today we'll talk about enterprise search, and that refers to searching data or searching for answers across your internal data sources, whatever they are, knowledge-based systems, uh, Google Drive, Gmail, uh, ticketing systems, Notion, so on. And uh, if I were to describe my happiness with those systems, we have ChatGPT, that's really cool. Then we have Google, that's also very cool, but not quite as cool as we just saw. And then uh, there is a con uh, enterprise search. So is it really that bad? Let's um, try. I'm picking on Lyft just because that's the data set that we scraped. But trust me, most of enterprise search systems look exactly like this. So uh, Lyft is a US version of Uber. And uh, um, they have a Q&A website that has search. There is this page, how to request a ride, which is a pretty basic question you may have. So let's try and use the search. So what if you phrase it somewhat differently? How do I book Lyft? You get search results, and nowhere here you can see the page that you actually need how to get a ride. And that's what happens a lot of the time, that you need to get keywords exactly right, and there is no way for you to make search better. And it's not going to give you an answer. It's going to give you links. Um, and then back to enterprise search. Imagine having to do it over and over in each platform that may contain the right information for your query. And that's my typical journey is I would look in Jira, I would look on Google Drive and Confluence and Slack and Gmail. And even when I found something before, it's often pretty difficult to find it again. And it's really frustrating every time. Um, enterprise search is somewhat different from uh, uh, regular search of what ChatGPT is providing us answers over and what Google searches over. In that, uh, well, first of all, it's internal data sources and you need a unified search that looks across those data sources. Uh, then uh, you would want to get a verifiable answer. So there is no way that you would accept an answer that's wrong or that you cannot check or where, say, ChatGPT hallucinated. Um, and it has to be based on internal documents only, so it cannot be half based on your internal data and half based on whatever ChatGPT knows, for example. It must respect permissions, so you can only search over the data that you're entitled to. Uh, it would be nice if it were meaning-based, just like we saw just now. Uh, you should be able to do traditional filters, like look at only recently modified documents, documents just from a certain platform by a certain author or whatever categorical values you may have. And it would be nice if it were actually getting better the more you use it and if, we, if you could provide explicit feedback to make it better. So a very common question, and if you take one thing out of this talk, it's that ChatGPT by itself is not a solution to this problem. So why not? Well, first of all, it has no knowledge of internal data. Uh, 
second, even if it had knowledge of internal data through fine tuning, it is not well equipped to provide you links to sources and to tell you exactly why it's giving you the sensor. Uh, it has no idea of permissions, and it doesn't really support filtering the way enterprise search systems do. So what's uh, a solution? Uh, retrieval augmented generation is uh, uh, probably the most popular solution at the moment. And the way it works is you have your query, like how do I book a ride? Uh, it goes through search. And we'll talk about search in the next few slides. Search retrieves relevant documents, however many you feel is needed. Then those documents are inserted into the prompt of a large language model, for example, ChatGPT. Together is a prompt along the lines of respond to this query using only the information below and reference which information you used in your answer. So uh, if you go back to our um, slide of what we want from enterprise search, and now it's color coded, green is what we get from the search component and blue is what we get from uh, ChatGPT then it's mostly green. Uh, let's take a look at the first component, so the search component. And first, we'll talk about uh, minion-based search. So what can enable us to do minion-based search over your internal data? And uh, it's something that's called uh, embeddings or embedding models, where you take data from all of your sources, you pass it through an embedding model that's also a transformer, just like ChatGPT, but a much smaller one. And uh, it creates a representation of every uh, passage that you give it in a vector space that basically lets you do a similarity search based on that vector representation. And then when you get a query, like how do I get a ride, you pass it through the same embedding model, so you see where it lands in this space, and you just look for the nearest documents, and those documents will be similar in meaning to your query, and you return those documents uh, from, uh, from your vector database or from your index, and then you, you will be able to just use those search results, or if you wanted to, you can pass them on to um, a large language model. So uh, embedded models are much, much smaller than, uh, than large language models, and uh, um, uh, OpenAI has its own embedded models, there is a leaderboard uh, on Hagen Face. Uh, I have it open somewhere here, of uh, embedding uh, benchmarks, so embedding models. And uh, OpenAI's embeddings are number 13, and most of the top ones are open source. The one that we are using is uh, E5 Large V2, so that's number five on the leaderboard, and uh, it works amazingly well. Uh, so the lesson here is that the model is small and open source, and you can get a lot of value out of it. Um, it's pretty easy to fine-tune those models because they're much smaller. And actually, this is where ChatGPT helps us in uh, um, being able to create a labeled data set. So in order to fine-tune something, we need to tell the model which answers we expect, or in the case of fine-tuning embedding models, we want uh, queries and the relevant documents. So that's the training data set, that when I ask you uh, how do they write, you give me this article. And ChatGPT lets you do that by uh, a prompt like this. You can give it every document, and you can ask it to create 10 queries or whatever number of queries based on the document, and that, that will become your training data set for fine-tuning your embeddings model. And then why would you find your embedding models? Um, it helps you uh, understand your corpus, your text better. So for example, uh, jargon, if you are a virtual desktop provider, then HD may mean a hosted desktop for you and not high definition. So uh, fine tuning may be able to pick that up. Uh, things like Execution report in the context of trading platforms have a specific meaning, it's a message type. Uh, some unknown acronyms and words that are not used anywhere else except for a specific context. Uh, and then words like function names, something like get web request uh, is. So all of those uh, can become better if you fine tune your embeddings model. So uh, what if we fine tune uh, an LLM? Uh, it would have somewhat, but it does not solve the big issues. Uh, in particular, it would not help you 
in making sure that the answer is generated just based on your internal data. Uh, uh, beyond that, there are other complications. It does not prevent hallucinations. It still may not be able to point you to the source that it used to generate the answer. It's expensive. And then it's hard to update. So imagine how would you remove, for example, a document from your large language model? You would pretty much have to refine tune it completely. Um, there are other techniques that make search better. So I mentioned fine tuning um, the embeddings model, but there are other simple techniques that help you improve uh, even if you fine tune. Uh, one such technique is called the document and query expansion, and the way it works is, uh, so imagine this example of HD being hosted desktop. We look through all of the documents that contain the acronym HD, and we add to that document, HD is a synonym for hosted desktop, remote desktop, and RD. And we do the same with the query. If someone asks, how do I log in to an HD? You would add to the query, HD is a synonym for blah, blah, blah. And then basically, you are helping the embeddings model to search not for HD that it doesn't understand in this context, but for the words that it understands. And it also helps uh, chat GPT if we then pass into the prompt the query and the relevant documents. So it will be able to understand that HD is a synonym for those words because we tell it that it is. Uh, we started by kind of picking on keyword search, but actually keyword search is often pretty good. And it would be helpful to combine this wonderful semantic search that may be fine-tuned and query expanded with good old keyword search. So then the final score that you give to a document when you look for top search results would be a combination of your semantic search score and the keyword score. Um, faceted search uh, refers to being able to filter, and the main use case here is permissions. But then you could also filter by modification date, uh, by the source, by the author, and uh, so on. And uh, uh, we want search that gets better with use. It's really frustrating when you keep searching and you keep getting bad search results. So there are simple ways like explicit mechanisms where you could upvote and downvote the documents or provide a correct answer if search doesn't find it. You could also automatically make search better by analyzing which links get clicked. And you could do really cool stuff. Um, like you, are, you are getting in this retrieval augmented generation, you are say passing 10 documents to chat GPT and in its answer, it's only used, say, two. So those two are actually the relevant ones. So you could, only, you could automatically upload those two or just show those two. And uh, <clears throat> let me very quickly show you what a system like this uh, can do. So we used um, uh, the Lyft uh, Q&A data set. And here you can ask it, how do I order a taxi? It will find the answer. You could ask it, uh, how do I order a cab? How do I get a cab? It will handle any uh, variant. You could also ask, how do I order a taxi from my laptop? And uh, if I'm still connected, And here we go. So there are two components. There is a semantic search that returns the results. And then the content of those links is put into GPT-4 in this case. And GPT-4 is given the sensor. And it actually understands what I mean by laptop. So it tells you how you would order um, a ride online as opposed to from the app. And it extracted it from, from this page, how to request a ride. We can go to this page. And we can see that, indeed, uh, there is requesting rides on the web. It didn't mention laptop anywhere, but it was GPT-4 was able to figure it out. Uh, and yeah, it basically gives you the same step, plus step one is to log in. Uh, we can also index private data. So uh, we received some emails from Lyft when we took Lyft, and uh, um, we added the, them to the index, to basically to the documents we search over. So I can ask, uh, did I take Lyft to JFK? Yeah. 
And this is the email that's relevant. So semantic search found it. And GPT-4 is, uh, is able to confirm, yes, you took leave to JFK on this date. This is basically how much you paid and so on. Um, this is uh, all. I uh, just want to end with one more thought, because we're in this very spiritual venue. The paper that started it all is called Attention is All You Need. And that's, uh, uh, that's from Love is All You Need. But actually, if you, if you think about it, maybe attention is more clear than love, and that's all really what we can give. So thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>